Bob Wilkin, along with GES, take the position that as long as you believe in faith alone and the name of Jesus for eternal life, you are saved no matter how unorthodox view of Jesus is, such as Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. Is this correct? Yeah, I do take issue with uh, GES's position on that. I mean, the most extreme example, and it's kind of a classic now, I think Zane Hodges, he has an article, he had an article about, um, this is the whole crossless gospel controversy, um, although I'm not a huge fan of that term because I think it's, it's, it's I don't think it, that it, it really uh, cor correctly characterizes the issue. Um, like, so for example, uh, I think, I think, uh, I, 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 forgive me if I don't have all the details correct, but I believe Zane Hodge is basically uh, a couple years ago, more than a couple years ago, but I don't know, a, a while ago had a, a, a created a, a, a two part, uh, article that talked about how to lead people to Christ. And I think in that uh, there was an a, example that he had with that, uh, say for example, there's a person on an Island and he found a message in a bottle. And it simply said, believe on me and you will have eternal life. Again, paraphrasing if I don't have all the details correct. And he said that that person became convinced that whoever said that uh, could guarantee him eternal life, that that person was saved. Um, again, and, and I, I, I would, that kind of blew me away. It's like, okay, so I don't think I even knew the name of Jesus. Um, uh, they, I, I don't think you really necessarily need. To know, I don't think you need to know the name James, Jesus either. But he, they didn't even know the name of Jesus. They don't know about, know about uh, you know, what their predicament was. Uh, you know, uh, or they, if he was the Son of God, what he did. They didn't know anything about his person or work. Zane Hodges was basically teaching that if someone read that message, who he, he, I think it's like John six forty seven for example. Uh, whoever reads that single verse knows nothing about who said it or the or what you know what. Uh, his credentials or anything else uh, that or why he could provide that eternal life that that person was saved and I, I do have strong disagreements with that um, I do believe there's a, 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 a I, I do believe there's a bare minimum of the, a, a bare minimum of content of saving faith so the the, the, the content that you must believe I, I believe there is uh, essentially um, a minimum and I think scripture if you read it carefully, uh, does uh, call that out for us m multiple times uh, what what those uh, essentials are um, and it's basically uh, uh, here let me just pull up my notes here on this um, the base the basic the essentials are a person must simply believe uh, the gospel of Christ and that basically that message is that Christ uh, he, he, he's the Son of God. Jesus, and so being the Son of God, He's both man and God, and the one who died for all our sins and rose again from the dead in order to provide salvation by grace through faith in Him alone. Uh, there's various ways to say that same message, but that's it, pretty much plain, plain as it gets. And I, that it's very, I think that's in line with our one uh, gospel in one sentence message. So again, I think GES uh, would would. Um, GES would argue, okay, you don't need to believe in the deity of Christ. Uh, you do not need to know that he died for your sins. Um, you don't necessarily need to believe he rose from the dead. All you have to believe is that you have eternal life through him. So almost like, it, it's bizarre what they believe. It's, it's very hard to pin them down, as a matter of fact. Um, and I think there may be some differences as well. I think there's differences with different members of GES. Um, you know, Bob Wilkin might, uh, has a variation Zane Hodges has a variation. Um, I forget what they uh, They have a number of a number of other individuals that adhere to that. And again, that they I think they believe you don't believe the deity of Christ. You, they don't you don't necessarily know he need to know he died for your sins. You don't even need to know that uh, sin is what separates you from God. Um, I think those are bare essentials that need to be understood. Uh, again, I kind of liken it before. To, a, to an escape room. Escape room is kind of like a, a, a trend nowadays where you go into this room and they give you different clues about how to get out. And so you need to understand, you know, what you're, you need to understand that you're, you're, you're stuck in a room, you're a prison cell, and you're, you're there because of your sin and you need a way out. And you can't do it yourself. You have to rely on somebody else and that somebody else is God himself who, who again, took care of the problem by dying for your sins. 
So, um, I I do believe they're that that their gospel and it, they, I, they haven't been that way always either. That they I think over the years they've gotten more and more what I call liberal, and um, they really I believe they have strayed from uh, sound doctrine and and not only not only the gospel itself, but also they teach things like outer darkness being for Christians, uh, unfaithful Christians, and I think that's uh, easily uh, debunked and incorrect. Um, so I guess I'll leave it there for now. I'll give, give you a, ch a chance, Luke. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, you'll give me a chance. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this is something I've had a chance to talk about many times. And it, this is uh, 2021. It was just about this time in 05 that I started to realize that uh, there's a problem. Uh, I, I started street preaching, and I, I came to know a lot of different street preachers. And everybody's message was different. Uh, and as I became friends with many of them, I was able to have some good private talks with them. And I, I started asking everybody this question. Well, what is what's the bare minimum that a person needs to understand and believe the details uh, what is it they you, in order for so to be saved what would you put on that list and it didn't take me long to find out that uh, there was no consensus everybody had a different answer some people would come up with a verse uh, and, and the, the, it's that verse there, like can believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and that's, that's it. And, and other people uh, would have more than one verse and more than one requirement. Uh, as uh, the years went on, I kept on asking that question and realized that there uh, uh, doesn't seem to be anything settled. Has anybody ever taken the time to try to uh, form a consensus and say, can we agree what's the minimum? So about three years ago on this CES program, uh, we had uh, Matthias and Daniel, Bill, Renee, and myself. And I, uh, I offered this question to everybody. I said, here's 12 points. Uh, how many of these 12 points are uh, necessary for a person to understand and believe uh, for their salvation. And among the five of us, there was not one, two people that agreed. Uh, uh, some, some said three or four, and others said as many as all 12. Um, and if we, if you were to ask this question right now among yourselves in the chat room, if everybody were to answer the question now, make a list of everything that you believe a person must understand and believe the, the details. Uh, that, that well, for example, just off the top of my head, that uh, uh, Jesus was God and he came down from heaven and became a man, that, that he was born from a, a virgin, uh, that he, he, he uh, died, a, he performed miracles, uh, that he, uh, that he uh, was crucified for our sins and, uh, and was buried and was uh, raised from the dead on the third day and now he, he sits at the right hand of the Father, and that he is a, one third of the Godhead, the Son, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all God, and yet there's still one God. I mean, I could go on. I'm just off the top of my head making a list for you. How many of those things would be on your list? You're going to find that we're going to hard, you're going to find it hard to find another person who agrees with your list. Um. So this is something that I've given a lot of thought to over the years, and, and uh, I personally think that the list is probably very small uh, because I do believe that Jesus is eager to save. I don't think that um, if a person didn't have a lot of the facts, uh, and but they they had a basic faith. I'm not going to give you a list right now, but let's let's say they had a, some basic faith in Jesus for their salvation, but some of the details they didn't were aware of, or um, and they died, 
I don't think Jesus is going to say, well, you didn't get enough of your facts straight. You're going to have to, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you, you should have learned more. This is one of the problems we had with the group that we had to separate from a few months ago, is that their list seemed to be unending. Uh, they, they, they really developed a system of, of um, works through study. In other words, you have to seek and study, and 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 only when you finally learn enough, or, or what will you, will you can you be saved? And uh, that their list was really quite exhaustive. How much you had to understand and believe. Well, at one point they they said that if someone believes that their sins were forgiven the day they believed, that they're they're lost. They're not saved. They they believe that Jesus paid for their sins on the cross. And their sins were actually forgiven when they believed it. And yet they they argued that no, they have to understand and believe that that, that they, they were actually forgiven when Jesus died on the cross. And without understanding that and believing that distinction, that they they were they were not saved. See, this is how far people are splitting hairs, gnat straining. And so uh, we recently came up with a list, a, a statement. Uh, uh, we have, I have quite a few things that I uh, want people to understand and believe. Um, and personally, I would rather err on the side of giving them more than they need than not enough. If I said, believe on the name of Jesus and you, go, you have eternal life, um, even though maybe Jesus would be satisfied, I, I, but I, I'm not gonna risk it. I want them to know these things. On, on our list and the list that we came up with is we said the gospel is simple it shouldn't take an hour to explain the gospel so if you're if you look at a video and it says how to be saved and the video is an hour or two hours long don't even bother watching it it's obviously going to be a uh, heresy because they're they're telling you so so much is necessary uh, if you if you can't uh, explain the gospel enough to, for someone to be, get saved in just a, a, a minute or two, and I believe we tried to do it in one sentence, and this is what we came up with: God became a man, Jesus Christ, and He died on the cross to pay for all our sins, and was raised bodily. See, that's a distinction. Wait, he wasn't raised just spiritually; it was a bodily resurrection. He was raised bodily from the dead to guarantee the gift of eternal life and heaven to all who believe that Christ alone provides salvation and eternal life through faith in him alone. So these are the main points that we agreed that, okay, at least we want a person to understand, believe, and agree on these points here. Uh, we could have added more to it. Uh, but uh, and and some people would argue that even even less is is required. There are some here probably right now that would say, well, if you don't understand the Trinity, this is probably a question. I think we've got that coming up on a Friday program, uh, true or false. But do you have no? To it's actually, it? I think it might be the. It's. I think it actually might be the next question. <laughs> oh, is it the next question? I think it might be. Let me look and see. Oh, let me look here. Uh, Oh yeah, that's the very next question. Wow. wow. Okay, so I'm good. I could actually uh, connected those uh, when I organized these questions, Ben. I did put them in their order for uh, to make sense. So I forgot about that. Uh, so some would argue that you have to believe in the Trinity, understand, and believe the Trinity uh, to be saved. So we'll go to that next. But uh, that's that's what I think is that uh, I I don't want to err by the Lord saying to me, look, Luke. Why didn't you tell them this and this? They needed to understand these points, and, and so uh, I, I don't. I I don't want to be guilty of negligence that I failed to to tell them what they really need. And I believe that this one sentence here: that Jesus is God, that He paid for your sins on the cross, He raised from the dead. You get eternal life that's guaranteed to you if you believe in Him completely for it. Uh, then. Uh, I think those are the main points, uh, and I, I'm satisfied that that's enough. Uh, okay, Ben, uh, any any more on this question before we go to the next one? Uh, well, I, I, just to kind of put in concise formula, what I, I believe, I think you would agree with this. 
I again, I would say if there's five, if you want to put in five points again, I'm not trying to be dogmatic or anything like that. Or oh, you must you must say it must be these exact five points. I'm just saying personally, this is what I believe is that the first is that you know G, there is Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God, and by being the Son of God, he was both fully man and fully God, and he was sinless, uh, a, a sinless, a sinful. Uh, if he was just if he was just a, a, a sinful man, then he couldn't save you from anything. Um, again, he, I think it, it's important to understand our predicament, it, what we need to be saved from. Um, so again, Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, sinless, Son of God. Uh, he died and rose again. That'd be number, point number two. Uh, to pay for our sins, uh, pray for everyone's sins, or at least your personal sins. That's point three. Number four, gives eternal life to those who trust in him. Uh and then number five in in him uh, him alone. So again, uh, Christ, you know, I, I think we're on the same page there. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, it, it, when I read the Bible, though, it, it I, I don't get the sense um, that it's it, I, I get the sense that it's more like a, a black and white boolean type of thing, where because uh, it, it it basically says like. Uh, that you know, uh, I think it's in like um, in Thessalonians that he says that you know that they, should they should, oh actually you take the parable of the sower for example it says that should they believe and be saved it's like it's like God's obligated to you know once he believes the once you believe and you believe the right thing he, God's obligated it's not a matter of like oh well uh, I, I I I I'm um, willing to do it we know he's more than willing to do it he's so willing to do it he already did it and so. Uh, it's to me. It's more of like a. It's a. Uh, it's not, it's not a matter of like uh, God is that good enough. It's it's a he has to do it once you believe, once you believe the right the right content essentially. Okay, <clears throat> well, if you didn't know it, I hope you understand it now. That there is not a consensus. We've tried to uh, come up with a bare minimum in that. Uh, sentence, but uh, Ben, the points that you've added, I I would say that uh, even though uh, certainly I believe those things, uh, if a person didn't understand those, I think they'll be saved in spite of not understanding those initially. Uh, there's a lot of things that people would argue that uh, uh, they need to understand it, but that can come later. I've heard a lot of people even say that even about the deity of Christ. Well, they don't need to understand He's God. I mean, they'll, they'll they can get that later. Well, the points you made, I think, fall under that, or you know, a person can get that later. It, it doesn't; it's not a requirement they get that necessarily. Uh, because, um, I mean, if, if we do that, then we're always going to be at the point where, well, what about this? And someone may, may argue that that's also, and, and pre, that pre, then soon we end up with a list of a dozen or twenty, like the people that are, are no longer with us because their list is exhaustive. <laughs> And so you, you've got to become a theologian before you can be saved. Um.